Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. We lift you up, King Jesus. You reign forever, Lord God. You are holy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord God. Magnify your great name. There's no God like Jehovah. You are the King of glory. You are the Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. And we honor you, King Jesus, for being our victorious Lord, our conquering King, our Redeemer, our Sanctifier, being the living Word, the bread of life, bread of heaven, the feast you want no more. We glorify your name, O oh God, for there's no God like Jehovah. You are the living word, O oh God. You're the fountain of life. And you spoke Father, things to existence <coughs> by your spirit. And you set us free from the inside, O oh God. And we magnify and praise you. For you're able to do exceedingly abundantly. All we ask for is your name Jesus King of glory just want to be with you basking in your presence in your presence is the fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore we honor you King Jesus for being our refuge and strength very present help in trouble you are the Lord of glory. You're the living word. We praise you, Lord God, for being omnipresent, for always, Father God, dwelling in our midst, omnipotent, you're all-powerful, God, omniscient. You know everything about us, God, and we glorify you. Good evening, Sister Jennifer. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, God Almighty. We honor you, King Jesus, for you are the good shepherd, the bishop of our souls. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, precious cornerstone. Hallelujah. Praise your name, God. Praise your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <coughs> Gracious God, our Father, Lord God, I thank you for this day that you have created. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence in our midst, O oh God, for the breath of life. I thank you, Lord God, for being the King of glory who reigns forevermore. Father God, you are the living word, the fountain of life, and we find our refreshing in your presence. Lord, tonight as I prepare to teach this class, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, that you remove the business of the day from my mind and my heart, from all of our hearts, all of our minds to receive from you, God, a rhema word from the spirit living God that will transform our thought life to be more submitted to your lordship, and your authority, that our hearts will be changed, O oh God, and filled with the Holy Spirit that will produce life in us, God then life will flow out of us into someone else through a kind word, a friendly handshake, a hug, oh God. Through an encouraging moment, Father God, they help encourage somebody else that God is still Lord in their lives and able to call things to work out for their good. And ask, oh God, that you have your way tonight, oh God, as I decrease, you increase. And I thank you in Jesus' name for healing the flow right now, God, for those who need healing in their minds, their bodies, their souls, their spirit, their will, their emotion, that you touch right now, God, by your spirit. Bring transformation on the inside, God, in their bloodstream, in their neural systems, in their psyche, God, to bring healing, oh God, and restoration. 
Let there be revival in our lives, oh God, like never before. That we have a God encounter that will change our lives forever. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord God Almighty. True, the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. What a mighty God we serve. For there's no God like Jehovah. He is the living word, the fountain of life. He's everything we need. And all we have to do is trust in him and stand on his word because his word produces life. And when you begin to study and meditate on the word of God, you're building yourself up in the knowledge and understanding who Jesus Christ is to receive a rhema word, a specific word spoken from God to shape your future and your destiny according to his will. Amen. Last week we left off talking about how Jezebel wants to quench the anointing and how Saul, King Saul, was dethroned from his position because of rebellion. And the Lord is not playing with his people in this season, in this time. Time is winding up where God is moving by his spirit in all of our lives to reposition us into our place of promise. We miss it because we're stuck in carnality. And God wants to strip the spirit of carnality off of your mindset because that's controlled by Jezebel's spirit. That's controlled by the enemy. It manipulates, it, it strips you of your power and your authority and puts you in a vulnerable state of rebellion where you find yourself falling away from God's presence. Even though God is still there, we try to shut God out by our rebellious ways. But I've come to let you know tonight that the Lord is still there with his arms wide open, waiting on you to repent, be restored, to be refreshed in his presence, and come back to the fountain of living water where you can drink freely and be delivered in his presence. Amen. God bless you, Priscilla. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Hallelujah. I don't know where everybody else is tonight, but we're going to go on anyway. So tonight we want to talk about Jezebel, Six and Ahab. Jezebel, Six and Ahab. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Amen. So I pray that you are ready to receive the word of God tonight that will inspire, that will edify, that will build you up in your faith and help you stand fast in liberty Christ made you free. But before we go <clears throat> to our lesson tonight, I want to read a devotion from the book, More of You, God. Amen. More of You, God. It says, favor, favor, favor is what I hear in my ear today. Lord, your favor is wrapped around me. I'm blessed in every move and step I take. I am keeping my eyes on the prize, my Heavenly Father. I know what seems dark and frightening is going to turn into a glorious light. You, God, are going to turn all things into your good for me and for all those near me. Because there is no one like you. I rejoice in you, Lord Jesus. How wonderful and beautiful you are to me. I press forward. You hear that? I press forward. Favor chases me with more of you, God. That is so awesome because favor is what God has upon every child who trust in him and believe in his word and his promises for them. He has favor on your life. And what favor does, it presents the opportunity to get what you don't qualify for. And God does what he wants to do in your life to display his glory through your life. If it means opening doors in your life 
of prosperity. God releases favor that you can walk into the promise he has for you. Sometimes when God is shifting us in our lives, it seems out of the norm. It gets dark sometimes in our lives. It becomes frightening because I fear the unknown. And God is turning into a glorious light. In other words, the light of God will shine in your dark places in your life to transition you to a higher place in himself to promote his glory through your life. God is turning things around in your life for the good. You may not, may not feel it, you may not see it, may not look like it, but if you trust God's plan, trust his word, every word that God speaks in your life will surely come to pass because he's near to you to hear your cry and mend the broken hearts. So the favor of God is not just for you, for even those around you. When they become attached to you, the blessing that's on your life begins to flow through others, and they become blessed. I'm a living witness. Being a redeemed faith fellowship church that I've been in Milwaukee has caused me to receive blessings upon blessings upon blessings because I stay connected to the prophet, the shepherd of the church. The Lord said, believe in the Lord God and his prophet, so shall you prosper. Receive a prophet name of a prophet, receive a prophet reward. And that's a promise. Anything God has for you, has for me, you're entitled to it. That's a benefit that God released to you, his child, because he loves you unconditionally. And check this out. It's not predicated on how you feel. It's not predicated on what people think about you. It's not predicated about what you walk in, in righteousness of God all the time. It's based on God's will and his plan for your life. God knows the moment when you're going to turn and repent. He knows sometimes we go astray in our hearts. We all know we do. And he knows the moment we're going to get vulnerable in our hearts of repentance and come to place and say, God, I messed up. I made a mistake. Forgive me. And God will take your sins as far as the east is to the west to remember no more. Amen. That's a promise. So favor chases you. It comes after you because the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. When you have more of God in your heart. Amen. God bless you, Gary. Thank you. Praise the Lord God Almighty. I tell you, God is so good. God is so good. Thank the Lord for his word tonight. But I tell you, I'm looking for God to do something supernatural in all of our lives by his spirit. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Glory to God. Okay, we, we're going to pick up tonight from what we talked about last week, how Jezebel's spirit, it quenches the, the anointing. Jezebel's spirit, we've been talking about this for the last few months. Is a very strong demonic power of the enemy. And he uses people in the church to assassinate the church. Every child of God, I mentioned this before, when you receive Jesus Christ in your life, you're anointed. Every child of God is anointed. The problem is people don't know how to use their anointing. They've never been taught that they're anointed. The anointing is upon your life when you accept Jesus Christ, who is the anointed one. The anointed one empowers you, enables you to walk in your purpose to fulfill your destiny that God has in your life. But you can't operate in the anointing if you're not willing to turn from your sinful ways. You got to allow the Spirit of God to draw you into the place of understanding, a place of wisdom, a desire to follow God wholeheartedly. You cannot straddle the fence and call yourself a child of God, because He called you a hypocrite. Anyone who's straddling the fence that's lukewarm, you're trying to live God's way in the world's way. 
The word says God told Joshua to tell the children of Israel, I have set before you life and death. He said, choose life that you and your descendants may live. He didn't say just for you, but he's talking about your generation, your bloodline will continue to live and produce the life of God from heart to heart. But the problem comes in because we're stuck in carnality. We refuse to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. All the time God is talking. So we put some spiritual earplugs in our ear when we're not ready to be converted and change. So we keep on doing the things that satisfy our flesh no matter how much we grieve the Holy Spirit. And that word grieve is to sadden the Holy Spirit. He's a person. He dwells in you. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God in three persons living inside of you that controls your thought life when you're willing to submit to his lordship. So we have to get to a place in ourselves where we realize we cannot live this life without Christ. Amen? Let's go on a little further. It says, Jezebel seeks an Ahab. We all know who Ahab is. Ahab was Jezebel's husband, who was the king of Israel. And Ahab was a weak, spaghetti, backbone leader. Didn't have no strength to stand up against the Jezebel spirit and his wife. So our book we've been talking about, the Jezebel spirit, it says breaking the threefold demonic cord of Jezebel, Athalia, and Delilah. And those three forces standing together in unity is not easy able to be put out of your life. Unless you call upon the supernatural force of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit to come to your aid when you're in time of need. Only God's ability, his power, supersedes the power of the enemy to strip it off your mindset. We have to stop going back to our vomit, going back to the things that God delivered you from, allowing yourself to call yourself a child of God in dirty garments. Got a preach right there. We're coming to the house of God with filthy garments and call ourselves a leader. We're coming to the house of God. We're going to tell everybody else a prophetic word, how God wants you to live your life in obedience to his truth and his righteousness. But it doesn't apply to my heart. Last week, we talked about on our radio program, how do you deal with the enemy within? Everybody have an enemy in their heart. And that enemy is something that you know that you're familiar with. Whatever your stronghold is, whatever your issue is, becomes your enemy. Because it opposes, it resists, it fails to submit to the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it puts up a wall to prevent God from coming into your heart to change you. And it causes you to continue to go down a pathway that leads to destruction. So we got to get to the place where we recognize I cannot live without God. I was listening to a uh, Tony Evans, Pastor Tony Evans out of Oak Cliff, Texas. He was talking about yesterday about how to be an overcomer. And he talked about the church in Revelation of Sardis, called Sardis. He said that church was a dead church because they stopped living for God. And the Spirit of God wasn't there. Because in Revelation, God talked to the seven churches that when they're not in order with him, he removed the, the candlestick from their church, their lampstand. He removed the lampstand. 
Which in other words, taking the anointing away. Taking the leadership away. Because of sin. And he said, but there was a few people left in that church that still had a heart to want to follow God. So you can have a mega church, have thousands of people, and yet only have a remnant who really have the heart to follow God. It's sad when we get into that place in ourselves. We refuse to follow Jesus Christ because our hearts is prone to wander into a dark place of sin. When God is trying to call you out of darkness into the marvelous light, the stronghold of the enemy is so powerful, it's like putting chains and shackles on you to prevent movement. And God is saying tonight, I'm stripping the enemy of his power in your mindset. In order to get to the heart, he has to get to the mind. In order to bring transformation in the mind, he has to get to the ear gate. Because whatever I hear goes into the mindset. When it gets to the mindset, it gets into the heart. Then it begins to plant seeds of rebellion, and I begin to act upon it. This is good. This is so good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when God wants to strip us of the power of the Jezebel in our lives, he has to speak a rhema word into your spiritual ears. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Let's go a little further. Jezebel spirit always seeks an Ahab with which in a line, which to a line. Some have labeled Ahab a wimp because Jezebel overpowered him. Ahab was, however, able to control through his ability to irritate and provoke. A silent and a passive control so he had some leadership, but he didn't have the full capacity of his leadership. I believe a psychologic logic might refer to this, a psychologist, correction, a psychologist. I believe a psychologist might refer this to as being a passive aggressive. A passive aggressive. Isn't that something? You're being passive, that means you just accepting whatever people want to do to you, but you still want to be aggressive. The scripture says that Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Isn't that something? He provoked the Lord to anger. Even though he was passive, and aggressive, yet he became wicked. Listen to this. Go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 16. 1 Kings chapter 16. Let's see if I can pull this up on here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 33. It says, And Ahab made an Asherah pole. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were with him. Verse 34, In his days, Hael of Bethel built Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segu, According to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun, or Nun, how we want to pronounce it, Nun or Nun. So he, he did this to provoke God to anger. Ahab knew. This is the thing about Ahab. 
He knew what God had commanded him not to do as a king. But because of the influence of his wife, Jezebel, he allowed that same spirit in her to manipulate his heart to rebel against God. So he built, he built up this wall of resistance to do things God told him not to do. I looked up something, what's the Asherah Poles? And Asherah Pole is a pole, it's a sacred pole or a tree that is used to honor the goddess Asherah. The pole was were often located near Canaanite religion site, religious sites, and stood near the altar. And, and that that's one thing about it. That spirit was so stern and so strong in his heart to turn against God. And God is saying tonight, we have to really pay attention. Who are we following? Because that spirit caused them to do things that God didn't want them to do. And it brought judgment on him and it brought it on Israel. But we all know the story of Ahab and Jezebel. When God raised up a king named Jehu to rise up against this spirit of Jezebel. And God told him to speak a prophetic word how destruction was coming upon Ahab and Jezebel. The Ahab was going to be killed. Jezebel going to die. They're going to throw her from the window. She's going to die. And the dog's going to lick her blood. Because God is not playing with people who dabble in witchcraft. Because he said, thou shalt not serve no other God but himself. We have to choose who we're going to serve. We want to serve the God of Israel, the God of today, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. We're going to follow the God of this world, the enemy. We have to make a decision. Let's go a little further. Ahab had the ability to use the Jezebel wives or friends or relationships. You hear this? To do their dirty work. The spirit of Jezebel not just uses you but it has the ability to manipulate people who are associated or connected to you to cause them to fall prey to the Jezebel spirit. And Ahab easily hides behind the skirts of Jezebel. You hear that? That spirit is a wimpy spirit. Because if you hide behind somebody else's curtail, then you definitely got no power. You're counterfeit. You're fake. I use this phrase metaphorically. Listen to this. It says, And he ain't have easy hide behind the skirts of Jezebel to do his evil bidding. It says, I use this phrase metaphorically as neither the stronghold of, Je of Ahab nor Jezebel has a gender. So it's no person. It doesn't have a particular person. It usually have it chooses. And Ahab would provoke us to anger and cause us to remain defensive. You hear that? You ever been around people who were easily offended? And they always were defensive? When you try to correct them about anything they did wrong, it may be true what you're saying, but their heart is not going to receive it because it's coming from you. But let another person come along. Tell them the same word in a different format. They receive correction. But because it was you, they didn't want to hear it. But another person come along that really don't know them speak the same thing, they accept it. We have to get to the place, I always say it all the time, where we, we become proactive versus reactive. To be proactive, 
I'm in preparation by the Spirit of God, listening to the voice of God, studying my word. I'm praying for discipline and divine order in my life. I'm walking by the Spirit of the living God in truth and according to God's word and righteousness. So I'm not easily offended or quick to defend myself. I'm quick to hear and slow to speak. If you find yourself easily offended from correction, you need to go to the altar and ask God to reveal to you the underlying issue in your heart. Why are you so offensive? And why are you so defensive when it comes to bringing change in your life? Because we find ourselves, I was just sharing with this somebody earlier today, that a person who's immature in the body of Christ so he says, who do not know the word of God. It's like a baby designed to sense and work of the word. He who is unskilled in the word of God is like a baby designed to sincere milk of the word. You should be ready to teach, but you still need somebody to teach you because you're still a baby. When you should have matured by now. We are in the place where God is trying to provoke us to grow up, but because we're still playing in the devil's playpen, playing with his toys, we're not maturing. We're resisting maturity. We're re resisting growth. We're resisting advancement in the kingdom because my heart is still stuck in a childlike way of mentality. God have mercy on us. Oh my God. Because God is not playing church. We got to grow up. We got to allow the spirit of God to pull us out of that, that place of immaturity. To grow up. And then we have to be careful. When we try to say certain things God told us to say. When God didn't speak it. Because we're quick to say, God heard the Lord say this, the Lord said this, to tell you this word of prophecy, and, and you prophesy lying, and you know it wasn't God, but because you have uh, some problem with that person, all of a sudden now you got to prophesy to get their attention to make them follow what you're saying. I'm not going to go there tonight. We're going to leave that alone. But, but you know what I'm talking about. Because you got too many people who don't study their word and not consecrated and not praying and seeking the face of God, but yet they want to prophesy. We're going to leave that right there. And if that's you, let God check your heart. Ahab will provoke us to anger and cause us to remain defensive. Be on guard. Ahab is sneaky. He just like Jezebel. He's cunning. He's smooth. He's manipulative. We have to pay attention. When the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you the Jezebel and Ahab spirit in your life. We got to pay attention. Because the enemy is so crafty in his dealings in our lives. Jezebel was intimidating and in your face person. Therefore, many with a personality like Ahab submit to her direct confrontations. Ooh, wee. God have mercy. Jezebel is a stern, strong spirit who can belittle you and make you feel inadequate, make you feel like a failure, feel like you don't have no strength to fight against this spirit because they know how to control your thought life. And when God is speaking by his spirit and he warns you of this spirit, Je Jezebel and Ahab, you need to pay attention and go into prayer and resist that spirit. Instead, stand, stand, stand steadfast in the faith. 
Stand steadfast in the faith of Jesus Christ to oppose this opposing force who's coming against your mentality. Everything God has been teaching me throughout the last few years is how to not allow the manipulator spirit of the enemy to control your mind. Because once they control your mind, they control your heart, they control your life, they can cause you to become suicidal. It can bring destruction in your life, in the life of your family, your marriage, your children, your church, your finances, your health. Everything about you becomes affected by the spirit of the enemy. And God is saying tonight, when you pay attention, I will show you warning signs. I'll give you warning signals. When the spirit is trying to inhabit your mindset. But we don't pay attention. We're quick to fall prey to the enemy because we're not prayed up. God says this. As a child of God, when I wake up in the morning, I tell God, thank you for another day. I give him first attention. As I wake up in the morning, we can seek his face. Then I start doing whatever else I have to do for that day, right? I found out something. When I wake up in the morning, I don't put him first. My day be horrible. Stuff don't go the way it's planned. It doesn't work. Stuff don't seem to work out right. Because I didn't put him first. But when I put him first, God sets an ambush against the enemy who's plotting and planning to come against you throughout that day. And he stops him from affecting you so that you can move forward in the, the menu of tasks and things he set before you. God has a menu. He has a divine order. He has a plan for your life. You know how we take a planner and we write an agenda on that planner or the things I want to do out the day. And I might want to uh, go pay some bills, put money in the bank, go to the store, go buy some clothes, go visit friends and family and do different things, right? We have a whole list of agendas. So on that list, I have a heart desire to fulfill everything on that list. And sometimes I neglect certain things on that list because I didn't follow the list. I got off track. God has a plan. He has a divine planner that he wrote down on his planner the things he wants you to accomplish throughout that day. But you don't know it because you didn't seek his face. But when you seek his face, seek the early in the morning, as the deer passes for the water brooks, God began to show you in his list of the things I have for you to fulfill throughout your day. And he'll make you accomplish everything when you submit to him. He'll provide the opportunity. Let me correct myself. God don't make us do nothing. He gives us a choice to accomplish everything on his list. He has for you to do throughout your day. But we have to have a willingness to not be intimidated, to not be assaulted by the enemy of Jezebel. Because the Ahab spirit loves confrontation. And what that means, love to argue about things that's irrelevant. Things that are not even worth talking about. We're arguing about the same stuff over and over and over because each one of us want to make our point clear. And the enemy does that to keep confusion in your life and then brings it to the church. God have mercy on us because we allow the enemy to cause us to rise up against our shepherd, against anyone in authority in our church. Because of something they may have said or done that I don't agree with in the church. 
Someone become confrontational with my leader. If you're one of those people, you're out of order with God. Because you have to submit to your leadership and the authority. Because they are the ones that God set in charge over the house of the head for the, giving them. We have to really pay attention and trust God in his word to lead God and direct us in his truth and his righteousness. Amen. To go a little further. Jezebel and Ahab's spirits. Check this out. They team up to gain control of a situation. You know, we're talking about I can bring it to today's time to make it relevant. Clicks in the church. Every church I ever been to had clicks. And what I mean by that, you had a group of people who band together in the church who tries their best to spread gossip and rumors in the church to destroy the church from the inside out. And every time they come to church, they're looking for somebody to influence, to follow their leadership, to turn against the leader of the house of God. And they do everything in their power to wreak havoc, to bring control in the house of God according to their way. I've even known people in the church trying to rise up as a trustee, to cause the leadership to turn against the leader and try to drive them out the church. Every time the enemy tries to pop his ugly head up in your house, we need to have enough sense to recognize what spirit is that's influencing me and speak against that spirit and rebuke that spirit in the name of the Lord. And rise up in our authority to undergird our leadership. Your position as a member in the body of Christ to, is to guard your shepherd. To undergird your shepherd. To pray for your shepherd. To encourage your shepherd. Because sometimes your shepherds get weak. They get tired. They get frustrated. And when you start banding together as a body of Christ to lift them up. You drive out the clicks because you disband them by the word of God. But they have no power to stand against the leader in that church. Ahab knew better than to marry an idol worshiper. But his lust for power overrode his commitment to God. Ain't that something? He allowed his heart to be driven into idolatry. You know the story of Ahab. When God first placed him king, he obeyed the Lord. And he did everything God told him to do, even drive out idol worship. Until he came into contact with Jezebel and began to follow her leadership. It caused him to lose everything he has. His integrity, his character, his focus, his leadership became compromised because he gave into the voice of the enemy. He knew better. You hear this? He knew what not to do because God gave him instruction through the prophet. But he chose to follow the spirit of rebellion. We make choices every day of our lives. Either when I get up in the morning, I'm going to follow God today. I'm going to do what's right. Or I'm going to follow the desires of my heart and do wrong. We choose to do it all the time. Goes back to what God told Joshua. I set before you life and death. Now choose life and live. So what are you gravitating to? Are you being drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ by the word of God? 
Or are you being driven and drawn by the enemy to oppose God and be in exile? Hear what I said? In exile. That means you outside of God. You lost your zeal. You lost your passion. You lost your desire to serve God. So you put yourself in exile. God didn't put you in exile. Exile means to be put outside the camp. And anyone that's in exile is alienated and separated from God. And we choose to be in exile every time we become lovers of men and not lovers of God. God had a problem with the church at Rome. He said the people... He said, I made myself known to them, but they chose to follow all the things of the world and not follow me, to become lovers of themselves and no longer lovers of God. And became lovers of men and began to do things that were unseemly in the eyes of God. In other words, they followed the evil passion of their hearts. And he said, because of this, Men with men, women with women, all this stuff. They did everything that God was against. All because of the demonic force of the enemy influenced their mind to reject God. So they put themselves in a place of exile. And the word says, for, for God says, for the wrath of God revealed against men and their ungodliness and all unrighteousness. Because God is trying to bring us back to a place of repentance. But he said, because of the heart was turned from God. God said, I turned them over to a reprobate mind. Where their evil became good and everything that was good became wrong to them. We have to pay attention, people. God is trying to wake us up as a people of the church, the body of Christ. So he's coming back for a bride while the spot of blemish. He's coming back for a people who are going to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. We have to recognize the demonic power that's rising against us and stand against it and rebuke that spirit. Rebuke that spirit. Listen to this. He said, but his lust for power. You know, we talked about that before, about their lust, right? Lust is a desire for something that's not yours. We didn't have lust to covet somebody else's wife. We didn't have lust to want what somebody else has. We didn't have lust for authority to take the pastor's place. We didn't have lust to overpower the church and bring heresy in the church, false doctrine, false teachings in the church because of the lust for passions. God said he tempt no man with evil, but men are tempted when they're drawn away by their evil desires. So we allow lust to cause an evil desire to fill our hearts, to draw us to rise up against authority. Ahab wanted power so bad. He was already king. You hear that? He wanted something he already had. But he wanted more power. Because this is what he's talking about. His lust for more power. To overroll, overroll or override the commitment of God. Though Ahab was justified in his own eyes, God condemned Ahab for his apostasy. For no one else so completely sold himself to evil as Ahab did. For his wife, Jezebel, influenced him. She influenced him. Isn't that something? She influenced him to go against God. She influenced him to turn away from the truth of God's word. We have to wake up, church, and pay attention because we're living in a time 
We have to be real with God, real with ourselves, real with people, walking your integrity, your loyalty to God, be committed to God in truth and his word, stand fast and liberty Christ made you free. No longer follow wickedness. Because Jezebel is waiting on the sidelines to stir up wickedness in your heart. She's waiting for that opportunity to seize the moment of control of your life. And you have to pay attention. If you don't pay attention, this spirit will creep into your marriage and produce jealousy, lack of trust. It produces hatred and bitterness. Always watching over your shoulder with assumptions, thinking that someone is cheating. Because you're not secure in yourself. So it produces insecurity. We have to be careful because that same spirit will be planted in your children. And as they begin to grow, they grow in the same order of pattern of life that you're living in. Which produces nothing but separation in their life from God. We have to raise our children up in the admonition of the Lord and the teaching of the Lord to teach them how to love God, to know God for themselves. Because the word of God has the power and the ability and the authority to change everybody's mind and heart if you want it. How bad do you want to serve the Lord today? How bad do you want to be set free in your mindset? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired of having the same old issues, the same old struggles, the same old bad habits, the same old lies spoken to you by the enemy? Are you sick and tired of always failing in the same old mess? When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's when God has the opportunity to come in. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If any man open the door to me, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. And what God is talking about, when you're at the place of repentance, where your heart is pliable, just like gold, gold when it's pliable, it's soft. It's able to be manipulated, to, to be changed in a different form that the, the architect you want to do. God is saying, if your heart is pliable, then the word of God can come into your heart and reform your heart. Take out that filthy heart, the heart of the flesh. I mean, the stony heart. Correction. Take out that stony heart and give you a heart of flesh, which is after his spirit. When he comes into your life, and gives you his heart, that's when you know that you're ready to be changed. Because once you allow the Spirit of God to come to your heart to bring change in your life, in your mind, your spirit, your will, your emotions, then your life could be reformed into the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. That you can walk by faith and not by sight in his word. And be led and driven and guided through the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest. I pray that bless somebody tonight. God bless everyone who came on tonight. I thank you for tuning in. Pastor Cornell, God bless you, sir. Amen. Pastor, uh, Pastor Dabber, uh, Minister Donald, God bless you. My cousin, Gary and, and Priscilla, my sister-in-law, God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Lashana, God bless you. Amen. If anyone wants to sow a donation to the ministry, there's a tag on here to send uh, stars to, to support the ministry. Those stars add up to money for the ministry. Amen. But I pray this has really opened your eyes to begin to see yourself the way God sees you. We're not trying to condemn and judge nobody. Not trying to put nobody down. 
but God is trying to wake us up. When we pay attention, how our lives are being conditioned by the world to be changed from the inside out, to live your life by the Spirit of living God, that you walk in the promise of the word he has for you, God has a new direction for all of us. And in that direction, it leads you to the heavenly kingdom. It leads you to that place that when Christ comes again, you would know without a shadow of a doubt, if you were to die today, you would spend eternity in the kingdom of God forever with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You might be on here tonight, might be a backslider, man, I know Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. You, you, I want to encourage you tonight. That all you got to do is believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You can be saved through your confession. If we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. That's talking about the eternal life, to be born again, to have a new nature, new life in Christ Jesus when he becomes the Lord of your life for eternity. So I want you to pray this simple prayer with me tonight. And I guarantee you'll be born again, you'll be restored, be revived, be refreshed by the Spirit of God. Your life is going to be changed from this day forward. And it's up to you to get into a church, a Bible-based teaching church, where you can learn about your new identity in Christ Jesus. When you get into that place, that's when the Lord will come into your heart and fill you with his truth. Where you can stand fast in liberty where Christ has made you free. It's a joyful place to be in the presence of the Lord. So would you pray this for me? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for giving me another chance to come into my heart and forgive me for my sins and deliver me from the power of sin in the mind of the enemy. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I ask you, Lord God, to lead God and direct me from this day forward in the new life that's found in knowing you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got restored. You just got refreshed, revived, born again by the Spirit of living God. It's up to you to this desire in your heart to walk forward by faith and not by sight. To study God's Word and know how that Word applies to your life and bring change to you. I want to read this devotion before we leave tonight from Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. Amen. It says, I am ever so near you, hovering over your shoulder, reading every thought. People think that thoughts are fleeting and worthless, but yours are precious to me. When I smile, I think of you. I smile when thinking lovely when you're thinking lovely of me. My spirit who lives within you helps you to think my thoughts. As your thinking goes, so goes your entire being. Let me be your positive focus. When you look to me, knowing me as God with you, you experience joy. This according to my ancient design. When I first crafted man, modern man seeks his positive focus elsewhere in sports, sensations, acquiring new possessions. Advertising capitalizes on the longing of people for a positive focus in their lives. 
I planted that longing in your human souls, knowing that only I could fully satisfy it. Delight yourself in me and let me become the desire of your heart. That's what God is saying tonight. Let yourself find your satisfaction, find your pleasure, resting in his presence. And he will give you the desire of your heart when you find the desire of your heart seeking him. Put him first in your life. Then he'll become desire of your heart every day. Amen. I pray that bless you tonight. But you stay encouraged. Continue to walk in the promise of God's word. The Lord is with you everywhere you go. He's a shield and a buckler around those who fear him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard against the enemy in your life that it would not prosper in your life. So with these words, we're going to close. I pray God continue to keep you in his will and his promise. He has to be life be fulfilled. The favor follow you everywhere you go from this day forward. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom. Amen. Anyone have any questions or comments before we go? Any questions or comments before we go? Amen. Amen. Blessings to you all. Thank you again for tuning in. Share this video with somebody else. If it's been a blessing to you, share, share with others and invite others to come on next week, Tuesday at the 6 o'clock hour. We will be on here again. We're going to talk about next week manifestations of Jezebel. Manifestations of Jezebel. Amen. So I pray this Continue to be enlightened to your soul and your spirit that you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Y'all have a good night. Until next week, shalom.